Professor and organizational scientist Bill Starbucks started his academic career more than 50 years ago. Since then, he has published over 150 books and articles in various fields, such as accounting or business strategy, to name a few. In other words, when it comes to management research, he has seen it all. That's why, when he was asked to give a conference about the trends seen in university at La Journée de la Fneige, Xerfi Canal chose to question him more specifically about the upcoming impacts of digital tools in teaching and researching. Here's his take. Bill Starbuck, thanks for joining us on uh, Xerfi Canal. Uh, today is uh, La Journée de la Fneige, La Semaine du Management, and your conference was entitled Issues and Trends in the Future of University. So, what do you think is the major change happening right now to business schools and university? I think the change is only just beginning, but that universities are likely to be deeply involved in the creation of teaching materials for cell phones. For cell phones? For cell phones. Actually, we were uh, talking earlier today, and uh, you were telling me that cell phones, you were considering cell phones to be the biggest, the most important invention in the whole history of mankind? I, it's also the, the, the widest spread one uh, in the terms of the numbers of human beings that have them and uh, the fastest one in terms of the speed with which it is spread throughout humanity. Uh, and that's why I think it's inevitably going to have dramatic effects on the universities. So. That's now, universities have already been strongly affected by the internet. Uh, I have these two friends, Ed and Marlena. They have a house in Oregon, near where I live, uh, in a forest, and they live beside a river because they like to live out by themselves and listen to the sound of the river. They also have a house in Arizona, near Mexico because in the winter time they like to have the nice warm weather and the dry weather of the south. But their teaching is in Colorado and Alabama and they have students drawn from all over the United States and they do all of their teaching over the internet. They, they get on the internet every morning and talk to the students basically one-on-one. -on -one. They're teaching the students one-on-one -on -one, but they form the students into groups to, to work on projects. They'll have five students in a group or six students in a group. They'll use Skype and the, the students will work together and cooperate with each other. Even though they may never meet each other face to face, they meet through Skype. So that's according to you is the major change we can imagine universities without campuses? I think that is already happening. It's already happening. Many universities are moving away from campuses and you know what are MOOCs? Mm -hmm. Well, MOOCs are eating away at university curricula. We know a woman who went to Harvard Business School to get an MBA two years ago. Harvard told her, before you come, we're not going to teach you accounting. You must study accounting on your own, and we suggest you get that online from the University of Utah, which has a very good online course in accounting. Uh, so Harvard, Business school is no longer teaching the introduction to accounting because it's free online. Uh, as long as you don't ask for credit in the course, there's no fee for doing it. it the University of Utah simply provides a course. So you see how this is uh, letting some universities which have especially good teachers or especially good courses take the business away from those who are just average. So how do universities make money if, if uh, basically uh, there are MOOCs that provide free education, how, right. what business model should universities go to? Well you see for the big elite universities like Harvard or Princeton or Stanford, this is free advertising. They get their very best teachers and they put them online and everybody says, oh, aren't they wonderful? Well, I want to go to Harvard. Of course, Harvard doesn't need more applicants. They have all the students they could want, uh, but they maybe can get better students. They think somehow this could be more interesting. But the, 
the universities that are using, the, that Harvard's competing with, are really facing a serious problem, I think. And it, I think there'll be a fallout. A fallout? For, yeah. I think, first of all, there's a problem of how to warehouse the, the people who are ages 18 to 22. They're not responsible enough to be given real jobs. Uh, they need to learn how to uh, live together and exploit each other or whatever it is that they do, and, but you don't want them doing out that, that out in the real world. So there'll still be a role uh, in society for places where parents can send their children, old children uh, and have them sit for a while while they uh, learn social graces and so forth, right? Uh, you know, they learn how to deal with wine and uh, smoking and sex and all those things, right? Uh, so that, that job will still exist, but we don't need a lot of education to have that happen. Um, and then there'll be little universities uh, that really sort of babysit the, the students. Uh, babysit. Yeah, for example, uh, um, the girl who lives next door to us is going to go to a college which has only 1,400 students. Now that's a very tiny college, it's, uh, but it's very expensive and everybody is watched and taken care of and the faculty know all the students very well and so forth. And there's some parents are willing to pay money for that. But the great state universities like the University of Oregon or the University of Iowa or whatever or the University of Toulouse, or I, I think they're under serious threat because they have to figure out how can they earn a living in this changing world. Uh, the University of Colorado has now proposed that you take your MOOC course or, or online course anywhere you want, they don't care, and they will give you a test, and if you pass the test and you pay them $300, you will have credit in that course at their university. So you can do the whole university education with never going there except to take a test. You were talking about uh, massive open online courses, uh, maybe universities without campuses. All of these impacts uh, are due to uh, the emergence of the internet. But you were talking earlier about smartphones and cell phones. Mm -hmm. So what are the impacts of cell phones on education? Well, I think. The, f the first immediate impact is, impact is going to be that there are both a great opportunity and a great challenge. Some professors are working to figure out how to use the cell phones in a large lecture hall so that the students in the lecture hall can react to the professor through their cell phones uh, d during the course of the lecture. For example, they could say, I disagree with what you're saying by sending signals through their phones. Uh, other professors are meeting to design actual course materials that will appear on the screens of the phones. Uh, and, but then that raises serious issues, in my opinion, about how do you, you modularize, right? Break complex ideas down into little pieces and can they really be broken down in little pieces small enough to sit on one screen, right? And I don't know that that's possible. It may be more possible in, say, the English language than in the French language, because the French sentences are longer and the French way of thinking is more complex than the English way of thinking. Uh, so I, that's what I mean by the challenges. But at the same time, the opportunities are that we can reach people who never before could get higher education or even basic education, people in Africa and uh, Southeast Asia and so forth, who are out in the jungles or in the forests, uh, who don't have any money, but they can still, they can have a cell phone uh, and they can learn and they're eager to do so. Uh, so there's the opportunity is, can we take our education to people who before have never been, we've not been able to reach. How about academic research, how do digital tools reshape the research in management? I think the internet is very clear. Uh, what that has done is that uh, it's made all the information in the world available to everybody all the time pretty much. And the publication of research is happening 
through databases online, not through journals. Uh, the internet has replaced the journals and the books. Um, I think books will soon basically be gone. Uh, the uh, number of libraries that are interested in buying research kind of books, uh, the, not novels, but actual fact-filled books, is declined to a very small number because they can provide the same information online. So they don't w want to deal with these documents anymore. Um, and then the book publishers, uh, some of them are actually trying to convert themselves into websites uh, so that you go to the website and you acquire not the articles or the books, but uh, online documentation. It could be, for example, a video. Uh, some of the book publishers are proposing to sell data. So a pr professor who wants to study a, a, some question could go to uh, the website of some uh, pr uh, well-known publisher and download data, presumably paying for the data, right? So th the commercial is, operation is shifting from the purchase of, of finished products to the provision of raw materials, right? They're, if you like, the publishers are becoming vertically integrated. How about open access? What's your take on open access? Should this information be free? Uh, would it bring new opportunities for uh, people who want to get educated? Uh, it would be a threat to publishers. But I became convinced students. a very long time ago. Mm. Fif 40 years ago, that there's no reliability in the editorial process. And in the early 1990s, I tried to persuade the Academy of Management to simply publish everything, not to make decisions. Now, I think it would be okay to have editorial boards, to have people read the manuscripts and su submit comments and so forth. But there's no evidence that reviewers or editors are able to choose better articles rather than worse articles. So why not publish it all and let the open access decide? And something like that has been happening. There was an article published last February in a journal called Management with at signs instead of A's uh, by uh, Bernard Forge, and I've forgotten who his co-author was. They um, say there are 10,000 open access journals right now, of which 3,000 want to ch charge fees, and 7,000 are absolutely free and open to everyone. Well, I, I don't see how somebody who charges money can make headway against somebody who charges nothing, right? So deep impacts awaiting. I think, I think they're going to really eat a big hole in publishing. I mm -hmm. put all my things on ResearchGate, uh, and SSRN, the two online databases that have uh, everything available. I, I publish it first in a journal, but soon after that I make it available free. Bill Starbuck, thanks for your time. Thanks for uh, all, of this, uh, all of this contribution on issues and trends in the future of universities. For Xerficanal, thank you again. You're welcome.